Well, hello there, everybody. Uh, my name is Tony Grillo. Welcome to my channel, Wisconsin Hugs. You know, the last couple days, uh, I've been telling you all about something that was told to me 30 years ago by a guy that was uh, a former detective with the Minneapolis Police Department. At that time, he had uh, quit the department, um, and it wasn't a happy uh, departure. Uh, basically, he was angry at the chief because he had been working on a case. Um, he had been going undercover and he'd been attending these uh, sex parties uh, that were being run by very famous Minnesota politicians. And these parties uh, also had minors. And he had taken pictures and he had all this evidence that this stuff was going on. And uh, he was told to hand over all the evidence at the moment that he was going to bust these politicians and arrest them. He was told to hand over all his evidence, give it to the chief, and drop the case. He wasn't to pursue it anymore. And he got so angry, he was like, told the chief to fuck off. And he threw his badge and he quit. Walked out of there. And then he came to work where I was at. He was driving semi-truck and he taught me how to drive semi uh, in Tucson, Arizona. But while we were there together, he was telling me his stories. And he said that uh, these parties were some of the sickest stuff he'd ever seen, ever. And he had taken pictures of them and he, you know, uh, and he said that these parties also had links to what had happened at Loring Park when a young man was killed and then it followed by a, two more men that had been shot. One was killed and yet that was a famous state senator and the other one was a, a young kid from my hometown of Coon Rapids, Minnesota. And those three men were shot in that by the same individual. Uh, and, and so, and that had links to the sex parties, but he was told to drop the case and not pursue it, and so he was never able to go after these guys. And as a result, according to Don, he said that the guy that went after these people that was doing these shootings, he was doing it in revenge. Uh, he was going after uh, those people that were at those parties, and uh, and and he he wanted revenge because the police uh, weren't doing anything about it, and. So, I wanted to find out if, you know, who was governor at that time while well, all of this was going on. And uh, I came across this story. And if you want any evidence that maybe there were these parties going on in 1991 in Minnesota at that time period, and that Don is absolutely right and he's not, bull not bullshitting me, and that's the real reason why he quit the department. Right here. There's a story right here from uh, NPR News. And I find it interesting that this story is here because it involves a, a Republican. And it, it is so typical. You know, uh, if, if a Republican gets in trouble, yeah, the story is going to come out. Uh, any type of sexual misconduct allegation story. Uh, and this happened in 1990, 91, right before, um, right at the same time that Don was doing his investigation of sex parties. And so here, here's proof right here that maybe this stuff was going on. But let's read the story uh, because I totally forgot about this. So right here we have Rudy Perpich. He's a Democrat, a really great guy from Hibbing, Minnesota. I've actually met him once. When I was a kid, he signed an autograph for me. He's a dentist from Hibbing, and then he went on to become governor of Minnesota. And then we have uh, Arnie Carlson on the left, uh, another great man. He's a Republican. And then we have John Grunseth in the middle. And he was the top runner uh, in the Republican Party at that time. But here was an interesting debate. They had a three-way debate here with Rudy Perpich, who's the incumbent governor, and, and then he, he was having a debate with two, with the two top 
contenders in the Republican Party, John Grunseth and Arnie Carlson. And so I would have liked to have heard that debate. It was an unusual three-way debate on television. Okay, so here we go. Let's read the story about what happened because John Grunseth had to drop out of the race because of what happened here, these these, uh, misconduct charges. The sexual misconduct charges, uh, allegations against Alabama U.S. Senate candidate Roy Moore bears a striking resemblance to the scandal that ended in the Minnesota governor's race in 1990. Incumbent Governor Rudy Perpich, a DFLer, was facing Republican challenger John Grunseth. On October 15th, the Star Tribune reported allegations by two women against Grunseth concerning an incident that happened when they were teenagers. According to statements by the women during a 4th of July party in 1981, okay, so this is all the way back in 1981, like nine years or ten years before 1990-91, Grunseth encouraged the girls along with another friend and Grunseth's daughter to take off their bathing suits as he allegedly swam nude with two other men. Now, who were the hell were the other two men? That's what I like to know. Were they also politicians? Doesn't say. We don't know. If they were Republicans, yeah, we would have got their names. When one of the two girls, when one of the girls, I'm sorry, when one of the girls refused, Grunseth tried to pull down her shoulder straps and touch her breasts, according to the allegations. The women also said Grunseth had been drinking beer and that beer had been served to minors at the party. Grunseth denied the allegations and accused Perpich in his campaign of spreading the story. So this was apparently, this was the, uh, uh, this was the Star Tribune right here, uh, that time. And that was the, uh, that was when this happened. Two women claim improper behavior by Grunseth in 81 party he, they were actually minors what's really sick is that his daughter was there and and the, you know and and apparently i don't know who this girl is right here does it have her name no that part got cut out but she is one of the girls that made the allegation against him okay Yeah, he tried to blame Perpich, but Perpich totally denied it, said he had nothing to do with it. He just learned about it. Um, let's read more. Perpich denied any knowledge of the incident, saying he first heard about the allegations when a newspaper reporter asked him about it. Perpich was a good man. I can actually believe that. Twelve days later, another woman came forward to say that she had an affair with Grunseth, which lasted through both of his marriage marriages. Yeah, so this Grunseth doesn't seem like a all that great of a man. The next day, he ended his campaign. Arnie Carlson, who finished second in the primary, replaced Grunseth as the Republican candidate. Since the change was made just a week before the election, a special supplemental paper ballot for the governor's race had to be created. And Carlson won that election. That was a su- surprise. That was a shock that Carlson won that election uh, and served two terms as governor. Because Republicans never win. So here we go. Um Here's some evidence uh, right here that these uh, politicians, uh, this is one instance right here where, you know, it cost this guy his his political career. He had to drop out of the governor's race. Last I heard, he's living like in some other country right now, like in Australia or something. <laughs> I don't know. So I thought I'd share that with all of you. I'm still looking at this story um, I had one other thing that, that was interesting um, when I was taking a look at this and maybe I'll, I'll I'm gonna I'm gonna keep kind of poking around at this story. but one of the things that I found interesting was that yesterday it mentioned that the guy uh, who did the shootings, the Loring Park and the Riverside Beach shootings when he killed uh, 
State Senator uh, John Chenoweth, um, it said that that guy, what was his name, John J. Thomas, it said that he was a host at a Denny's restaurant. Now, I took a look at where Denny's was, and yes, there were some Denny's restaurants in Minneapolis, and it probably would have made the most sense that he worked at one of those restaurants because I he probably didn't have a car. But if he had a car, there was a Denny's in Coon Rapids at that time. I know because I used to go there all the time. And in the second series of shootings, um, when John Chenoweth got killed, uh, there, the, the, there was another kid there with him. That kid was from Coon Rapids. And I'm wondering, what if the shooter was a host at the Coon Rapids Denny's? And maybe he knew the kid that he shot. Because maybe, I don't know, did that kid work there? Or maybe the kid went there because it was in Coon Rapids? Did they know each other? I mean, according to Don Heitland, he was shooting people that he knew. It wasn't He wasn't just randomly picking out people. He was seeking revenge on people he knew that he felt gave him AIDS from attending those sex parties, the alleged sex parties. I, I don't know if they're true or not, but guys, I mean, here's a story right here from, from NPR News that this Republican guy had was trying to have a sex party with two other men that weren't even named. And they were forcing themselves on, on young girls in a pool party. So, and I always believed that Don Heitland was telling me the truth. So, the reason I bring this up is because, you know what, all these people are gone. They're gone. They're not in power anymore. They're gone. Maybe it's time for the truth to come out if there's more to this story. You know, one of the things I found very interesting is that, and this is something that Don told me. He said, have you ever noticed that the shooter, John J. Uh, Thomas, I believe that's his name, he he has never, no, no reporter has ever been allowed to interview that guy. And there's a reason why the police are making sure that not a single reporter can touch that guy so he could tell his story. So what really did happen in Minnesota? Is this true? Was there a cover-up by the Minneapolis Police Department? Guys, I'm thinking everything that Don Heitland told me was true. And, and this is verification right here that there was stuff going on there. And you know what? Now that these guys are out of power, they're not around anymore, I think it's time for the truth to come out. So I'm going to keep looking at some of this stuff, and I'm probably going to do another video where I uh, show the locations and on a map, and I show what they look like, and, uh, and then go from there and talk more about what happened uh, in 1991 along with the Minnesota Twins winning the World Series. All right, that's uh, all I got for you today uh, with Wisconsin Hugs.